The show is set in a dystopian future where a devastated Earth has turned toxic, making it uninhabitable. As a result, the only place where humans can live is the silo, an enormous vertical structure comprising layers of dwellings, markets, indoor agriculture, and more. No one knows who built the silo, but it serves as a vital sanctuary for the thriving community within. We are then introduced to a sheriff named Holston Becker who is in deep thought as if something was bothering him. Him. He tells his colleague, Deputy Marnes, that he has decided to go out. According to the law, as soon as a person says they want to go out, an irrevocable contract binds between them and the judicial, and they are sent out of the silo. Deputy Marnes begs his sheriff not to do so, but Holston has already made up his mind. I want to see the trees, damn it. The scene then flashes back in time, and we see Sheriff Holston and his wife Allison, who have been trying for a baby for a very long time. Turns out that in the silo, the residents have to get permission from the authorities to have a baby. Every woman is implanted with birth controlling devices, which are removed only after getting permission. This time, the couple are finally granted with clearance for childbearing, causing them to be overjoyed. Following this, Allison has her birth controlling device removed, providing her a time period of one year to get pregnant. In silo, news travels very fast, mainly because the community is quite small, so the residents start congratulating the couple. You guys are gonna be fucking, yeah! While having their breakfast in the cafeteria, an old woman named Gloria approaches them and offers fertility counseling. However, Holston doesn't seem to like the lady, so he asks her to go away. The days pass by, and the couple continues to try to get pregnant. One day, Allison is working in her IT office when her boss, Bernard, berates her for publishing an article on recovering deleted files. He claims that digging history is against the law and warns her not to post any articles without his approval. Later on, Allison asks Holston that if rebels erased history, then what makes it wrong to question it? Here, it's revealed that 140 years ago, a few rebels waged a war on the regime because they wanted to open the gates that led to the outside world. After a lot of struggle, the rebellion was crushed, and that day was remembered as Freedom Day, even though all those people that wanted freedom were frigged up. However, all records of Earth's pre apocalyptic history were destroyed during the rebellion. Contrary to her husband, Allison harbors a belief that there is life outside the silo, and it's only their fear that is stopping them from exploring the mysteries of the world. The scene then fast forwards to 200 days later, and the couple are still trying to have a baby. They make out numerous times, even in Holston's office desk, but they don't get any results. Maybe they have to do more than just kiss. On Freedom Day, Silo's mayor, Ruth Yawns, gives a speech to the residents, reminiscing about the day when they took down the rebels. In the meantime, Allison is assigned to go to the base layer of Silo to help an IT guy named George in his work. Once there, George expresses that he's a huge fan of her work and that he made up a work excuse to meet her in private. He then shows her an old hard drive, a relic as per the judicial. He claims that the drive's memory is almost full, but he's unable to find any content inside it. Hearing this, Allison realizes that the drive must be encrypted and that it needs a password. After a lot of trial and error, she is finally able to crack it open, revealing all of its contents. Several videos, images, as well as the silo's blueprints. This leaves her anxious, because they can be expelled if the judicial finds out. Scared, she tells him to get rid of the disc immediately before leaving the scene. Despite her warning, George continues exploring the blueprint of the silo and learns about a secret tunnel at the bottom level. Later, Allison returns home, but she's unable to stop thinking about the relic. As a result, she takes a day off from work and revisits George secretly. Together, they go through the disc's files, uncovering a lot of secrets, including manipulation related to birth control devices. The last file leaves them utterly flabbergasted as they see footage of a vibrant earth, green trees, blue skies, and things flying in the air. These revelations raise suspicions about Allison's fertility issues, so she later visits Gloria to seek some answers. Gloria contends that the judicial doesn't want a woman like her to have babies. Much to her shock, the lady reveals that though the doctors claim to have removed the contraceptive implant, it's still inside her body. The following day, Holston awaits Allison at the hospital for a doctor's appointment. After waiting for quite some time, he returns home, 
only to find her in a bloodied state. She reveals to him that the doctor had never taken out the implant from her body. To prove her claims, she has pierced her body and taken out the implanted device by herself. She also tells him that she can't disclose her sources, but the authorities are the ones preventing them from having a baby. Furthermore, she tries to explain that the view they see from Silo's windows aren't real, but some kind of computer-generated image. However, Holston, who is worried by her disoriented state, prioritizes her safety and rushes to summon the doctor. While he is out, Allison heads to the cafeteria, where she catches people's attention and tries to explain how they are being deceived by those in power. She insists that a beautiful world exists beyond Silo, but access is denied to everyone. Unfortunately, her attempts are met with skepticism, and people start thinking that she's gone crazy due to not being able to have a baby. Shortly after, Holston arrives to calm her down, but she unexpectedly declares that she wants to go out. This leaves him completely stunned, and he has no words to say. Following this, Deputy Marnes cuffs her and takes her to the holding facility. Her wish, which is no less than a crime inside the silo, is set to be fulfilled soon. Later that night, Holston goes to talk to his wife in her cell. She once again tries to convince him that the screens only show what the authorities want people to see. Holston is still not ready to believe in her claims, but he can do nothing now. Afterwards, she's dressed up in a hazmat suit. While Holston watches her helplessly, he then reads the oath to her with tears in his eyes before the two depart. As she walks out into the wasteland, people watch her via large screens in the cafeteria. After walking a short distance from Silo, she collapses to the ground, presumably dead. This shatters Holston, while the rest of the people walk out of the cafeteria, saddened. Two years later, Holston is in his office when Deputy Marnes walks in with the news of George's death. He further informs him about an engineer named Juliet, who claims that it is not an accident or a self-kill, but a murder. Stunned, Holston descends to the bottom layer to meet the engineer, who is currently working in the generator room, and she looks like a complete baddie down there. The scene then shifts back to the present, depicting Holston, who is now placed in the holding facility after announcing his decision to go out. The next day, he is dressed with the hazmat suit, and the mayor reads the oath to him before sending him out. Like earlier, everyone, along with Juliet, watches him from the cafeteria. The moment he steps out, he is greeted by a clear blue sky, by lush greenery, and by birds in the air, confirming his wife's assertions. It suddenly strikes him that the residents must witness this, so he walks to the camera transmitting the footage to all the screens and cleans the lens. Despite this, the residents see the same imagery, a ruined world. Holston then starts walking towards Allison's lifeless body. As he approaches her, the toxic environment overwhelms him, causing him to collapse beside her. Juliet, for some reason, stomps out of the cafeteria in a fit of rage and screams at the top of her voice, saying that the sheriff lied to her. In the aftermath, Deputy Marnes sits in his cabin and opens a note left to him by Holston. In it, Holston has nominated Juliet as the next sheriff. Later, Later on, Marnes visits the mayor and asks if she has decided whom she will appoint as the new sheriff, but she says no. She then expresses her fear for instability among the people, especially now that there is no sheriff. Meanwhile, Juliet goes to Martha, an old lady who runs a repair workshop. Being the only person whom she can trust, Juliet decides to share everything that's troubling her. As she proceeds, the scene flashes back to a couple of years earlier, when George was still alive. Here, it's revealed that the two were in a a romantic relationship, but nobody knew about it. On a particular day after work, she went to George's room to see him, but he was nowhere to be found. On his table, she discovered a tiny toy-like object with a note. Later on, she learnt from one of her peers that George committed the unthinkable. Shocked, she went to a cop named Hank and claimed the incident is murder because George would never take such a step. Hank relayed the information to Holston, who then came to meet her in the generator room, continuing the earlier scene. And she still looks like a complete baddie down there. After inquiring some general questions, Holston takes her to the cafeteria to talk to her in private. Juliet is initially hesitant to share the secrets since she fears that he will take legal action. As a result, she makes him promise that he'll see and listen to everything with an open mind. When Holston agrees,
agrees. She takes him to her place and shows him the toy-like object. She also hands him a note left by George, but she is torn and hidden, the half of it for some reason. In the first half of the note, George has mentioned a secret location in the silo. Following this, Juliet leads Holston to Silo's basement that contains a secret tunnel. They venture deeper via a set of ladders that eventually leads them to a vast chamber that she used to visit with George. Holston is astounded by the existence of such a space within Silo. Not long after, Juliet notices a hidden wire beneath the concrete surface that is tied with a cloth bag. Inside, they uncover a box full of relics, an old camcorder, a Statue of Liberty figurine, some articles, and the same disc from earlier. Holston recognizes his wife's handwriting on one of the articles, shocking him. He then reveals that Allison did some work for George before she went out. Hearing this, Juliet misunderstands that Holston is not there to find out the cause of George's death, but he wants to know whether he had anything to do with his wife choosing to go out. However, Holston assures her that he'll investigate the matter to its depth, check the drive, and inform her about what their next step should be. Back in the present, Juliet shows Martha the bottom half of the note, in which George had written that he had found what he had been looking for. Upon hearing all of this, Martha tells her to be careful because things are getting dangerous. On the other hand, Deputy Marnes goes to the mayor's office, and this time, he reads her the note left by Holston. Mayor Ruth has no idea why Holston wanted Juliet, so she decides to meet her in person. She sounds like a baddie, she says. Later, Juliet revisits the secret chamber, where she reminisces about the quality time she spent with George there. She also recalls his mention of a door at the very end of the chasm. Juliet looks down from a height, but she can see nothing but water. Despite being hydrophobic, she makes a brave decision to go down and find the so-called secret door. She then takes a rope and starts descending as she nears the water. Her fear overwhelms her, prompting her to climb back up. As a result of this, she is so disappointed in herself that she resorts to drinking. The following morning, she awakens with a terrible hangover. Soon after, her surroundings start to tremble, signaling an issue in the generator room. Upon rushing there, she finds a junior worker named Cooper trying to figure out the problem. Juliet, who is still frustrated, punches him right in the stupid face, ordering him to back off. Though the problem is temporarily solved, the head of the mechanical division, Knox, who is watching all of this from a distance, isn't happy. He summons her to his office and warns her against showing such behavior at work. However, Juliet turns his attention to a critical problem they're facing with the generator. She asserts that the rotor is breaking down, so they need to turn off the generator and fix it to avoid a catastrophe. However, Knox refuses, citing that the people will panic if the silo goes dark, even for an hour. In the meantime, the mayor and Deputy Marnes had to gather information about Juliet from those who know her. At first, they go to the IT division and meet Bernard, who has intel and statistics about each and every individual living in the silo. When the mayor asks about Juliet, Bernard addresses her as a thief who stole tape from IT and isn't trustworthy. Next, they approach her father, Dr. Pete Nichols, responsible for newborns in the silo. They ask why Juliet, despite being the child of a doctor, ended up in the mechanical department. Pete gives them the most logical explanation. Juliet was always fascinated by machines, and fixing things gave her a lot of satisfaction. She was just 13 years old when she she left him, and it's been quite a while since he spoke to his daughter. Following this, the mayor goes to her old friend Martha and inquires about Juliet. However, the latter opts not to share much information with her. A short while later, the surroundings start to tremble as the generator appears to be malfunctioning once again. Workers rush to the room, while Ruth and Marnes arrive at Knox's office. Minutes later, Juliet also shows up and tries to understand the problem by reading the generator's vibration pattern. She she then enters the hatch and somehow manages to avert a potential disaster. In the aftermath, the mayor finally meets Juliet and tells her that she has been chosen to be the new sheriff by Holston. But to her shock, Juliet turns down the offer, citing her responsibility towards the generator that isn't working properly. Mayor Ruth respects her decision but hands her the badge anyway before departing. Later on, Juliet talks about her new job offer with Knox, Hank, and some co-workers. While conversing, Hank Hank looks at the badge and discovers something engraved on its back. When Juliet sees it, she immediately changes her mind and catches up to the mayor to tell her that she's ready for the job. However, she sets a condition. She wants her permission to shut down the generator 
for repairs. After a brief deliberation, Ruth agrees and makes an announcement that there will be an eight-hour power cut the following day. The citizens are scared, as they've never experienced such a situation until now. With permission granted, Juliet Knox and all the other engineering team members gather to devise a plan to fix the generator. Through their discussion, we learn that the team must pause the steam flow powering the generator and then close the valve connecting the steam pipe to the containment chamber, which will shut it down. This gives them a 30-minute window to fix the issue. Failure to complete the repair within that time frame will result in the entire generator exploding, plunging the 10,000 residents of Silo into perpetual darkness. Knox outlines the plan. They'll lift the panels of the generator to reveal the rotor and send Juliet to identify the problem. Once she signals, he will close the valve and turn off the generator, after which the countdown begins. Knox also asks her who she wants to take along as her assistant, to which she unexpectedly chooses Cooper, that little dick boy she punched in the schnoz earlier. At exactly 10 p.m., the backup power is activated and the team sets their plan into motion. The panels are removed, after which Juliet and Cooper are sent up. As soon as they spot a damaged rotor blade, they signal to Knox, who then closes the valve. Following this, they quickly remove the damaged part and send it down for repairs. While the repairmen work on it, Juliet and Cooper proceed to mend the internal damages. That's when Knox's assistant informs him that the valve valve in the containment chamber is heating up faster than anticipated, reducing their allotted time to a few minutes instead of the planned 30. Knox then shouts to Juliet and Cooper to retreat, emphasizing the need to open the valve to prevent an explosion. Hearing this, Juliet orders Cooper to continue repairing while she decides to buy them some time. She then goes inside the containment chamber and uses a water hose to cool the overheating valve. The temperature is very high inside the chamber, but she bears it. It. Eventually, the repaired blade is sent up, but Cooper has trouble reattaching it. The chamber begins to fill with water, and the temperature rises once again. Some of the pipelines even start giving up, making the situation intense. As soon as Cooper yells that it's done, he is immediately brought down, and Juliet, who is almost drowned, is pulled out of the chamber. Knox finally opens the valve, and the generator is turned on. Soon after, the silo powers up, bringing great joy and relief to everyone. Everyone. The next day, Juliet packs up her belongings to move to the upper level in order to assume the role of sheriff. Before departing, she pays one last visit to Martha and thanks her for everything. As she makes her way upstairs, she looks at the engraving at the back of Holston's badge that reads, Truth. Meanwhile, Bernard, who surprisingly knows of Juliet's new role as sheriff, approaches the mayor and again warns her about the consequences. However, Ruth dismisses his concern and walks away. Later on, the mayor is seen signing the document, officially appointing Juliet as the next sheriff. Suddenly, she feels uneasy, so she rushes to the restroom. Moments after she enters, Enters. Marnes hears a heavy thud from inside. Worried, he calls out to her, but doesn't receive any response. Sensing the urgency of the situation, he breaks into the restroom and finds her on the floor, choking on her own blood. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.